Welcome to this video where we will be talking about so-called stiff ordinary differential equations. By the end of this video, you will be able to choose an appropriate solution method if you encounter a stiff ordinary differential equation. Now, what are stiff ordinary differential equations? Well, they are ordinary differential equations that describe physical systems that have vastly different scales working in them. And examples for those systems with vastly different time scales are, for example, combustion processes. Right? What are the different time scales? We have some chemical reactions that involve radicals that occur on very short time scales that are very fast. But then there are other reactions that are comparatively relatively slow. For example, the generation of soot takes a comparatively long time. So in one system of ODEs, we have processes that are very quick and processes that are very slow. But our numerical method has to be able to deal with both the very quick processes and the very slow processes. Chemical reactions in general are another example. Or van der Waals forces between molecules, right? Those happen on very, very quick and small scales. So here's an example of a system of ODEs that has these vastly different timescales. The first equation is dx dt is equal to 998 times x minus 1998 times y. And we have an initial condition that x at t equal to 0 is equal to 1. And we have a second ODE, that is dy dt is equal to 1000x minus 2000y, with an initial condition that at t equal to 0, y is equal to 2. Now, we can calculate the analytical solution to this uh, system of linear ODEs, and we'll find that x of t is equal to negative 1998 divided by 998 times e to the power negative 2t, plus 2996 divided by 998 times e to the power negative 1000 times t. And then we have here the solution for the analytical solution for y of t has slightly different prefactors before the exponential functions. But the important thing is what makes this a stiff problem is what happens in the exponent. So there is a minus 2 times t. Well, first of all, right, t is positive. There's a minus sign, so the exponent is always negative. So this is a stable system. Solution doesn't go to infinity. But you'll see the prefactor in front of the time. In the first exponential term, it is just negative 2, and in the second one it's minus 1000. Okay, so that second one is a very quick process because the time gets multiplied by a large value, and comparatively speaking the first exponential term is a slow process because that time value gets multiplied by a smaller prefactor, negative 2. Okay, so now Let's uh, look at the analytical solution at a time of 0.1 time units, right? So if I park this into the equation here, t is equal to 0.1, and using the MATLAB or a calculator, I find a, the numerical value for the analytically exact solution shown here, and the corresponding value, if I plug it into the y equation, I get another numerical value for y at t equal to 0 0.1. Now let's use forward Euler with a step size of 0 0.1 to find a numerical solution. So forward Euler was, right, x2, my new value x2, and remember the solution time now goes into the superscript with round parentheses. So x2 is equal to x1 plus the first ODE right-hand side evaluated at x1, y1 times the step size of h. Well, x1 is equal to 1 plus the right-hand side f of the first equation is 998 times x1, and x1 was 1, minus 1998 times y1, but y1 was 2, right? That's the initial condition, so times 2. 
times the step size h, which is 0 0.1. So if we do the math on this one here, we'll find that the answer is negative 298.8. And we use forward Euler for the second ODE as well. So y2 is equal to y1 plus the second ODE right-hand side f2 evaluated at my initial constraint values x1, y1 times the step size of h. So that gives us 2, that's the initial value for y, plus the right-hand side of the second ODE is 1000x minus 2000y. So 1000 times x1, x1 is 1, so 1000 times 1, minus 2000 times y1, and y1 was equal to 2, so minus 2000 times 2. And if we plug those values in, well, first of all times h, never forget that, so times 0 0.1. So we've got 1,000 minus 4,000 times 0 0.1 plus 2, that's negative 298. That's the result of the forward Euler method, the RK1 method. So let's compare that to the analytical solution. Well, we'll see that we are completely wrong. We are not even in the right ballpark. That's very disconcerting, right? So, well, what went wrong? Well, let's look at stability, right? Because we didn't really look at stability for this problem. So remember, stability for an equation, dy dx is equal to minus lambda times y, is saying that our step size should be smaller equal to the 2 divided by lambda. Now, what's the lambda here in this system of ODEs? Well, if we look at these right-hand sides, they're all of this form of minus lambda times y. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to pick the lambda that gives us the smallest value of h. Because for all other lambdas, right, if we choose a different h, that would be stable. So we'll have to choose the lambda that gives us the smallest value of h, which would be the largest absolute value. And in this case here, if we look at those values, 998, 1998, 1000, and 2000, the largest lambda absolute value is 2000. Okay, so we're going to use that lambda. And that means that the stable step size would be 2 divided by 2000, well, which is 0.001. So that's a whole lot smaller than the point 0.1 that I just used before that gave me the completely wrong answer. Now, if I'm interested, though, in the solution at t equal to 0 0.1, I now have to do steps with a step size of 0 0.001. And to reach point 0.1, I now have to do 100 steps with that step size. And if I do this with the forward Euler method, now I get the following numerical values here. And if I compare those to the exact analytical solution shown up top, you'll see that we are suddenly not completely wrong anymore, right? Instead of negative 1.639, we get negative 1.6387. So we are relatively close. Which can be explained, of course, we have a first order method, so of course we have truncation errors as well. That's why we don't recover, leaving round off errors to the side for a second, that's why we don't recover the analytically exact solution. And we'll look here at the y value that's pretty close to the analytical solution as well, different again because of truncation errors. How can we reduce the truncation errors? Well, by reducing the step size. So. Let's go bold and make the step size a factor 10 smaller. Then we need a factor 10 more steps. So let's do 1,000 steps with a step size of h equal to 0.0001. In that case, we get a solution that's shown here. And now you'll see that we match even the first four digits, right? Negative 1.639, 1 in the exact solution, 0, 06 in the numerical solution. And similar, we get relatively, well, we get closer to the analytically exact solution, which is not surprising because we reduced our truncation error by reducing the step size. And we get a pretty good answer. Now, if you look at this, I had to do 100 steps 
or even 1,000 steps. That's costly, right? Suddenly my cost went up by a factor of 100 or even 1,000. Right? I can't do less steps, larger age, step sizes, because then I would be unstable. Now let's use the implicit Euler method, so backward Euler. And we already know that that one doesn't have a stability step size restriction. So let's use the full step size of h equal to 0 0.1. Now it's implicit Euler, which means that I have to evaluate the right-hand side, the f1, at the new value x2 and y2. So let me do this and just plug in the values. So I have my initial value of x, which is 1, plus the right-hand side evaluated at the new as of yet unknown solution, x2, y2. So that's 998 x2 minus 1998 y2 times the step size of h. Okay, let me combine the x2s because there's one x2 on the left and then there's 99.8 x2 on the right. So let me combine them to one side. That gives me 99.8 minus 1, so 98.8 x2. And then I have minus 199.8 times y2, that's equal to this on the other side, equal to minus 1. And I can do the same implicit Euler method for the second ODE, right, where I just plug in the unknown solution x2, y2 into the second ODE right-hand side f2. Let's use the values. Initial solution y is equal to 2 plus right-hand side 1000 times x2 minus 2000 times, 2000 times y2 times the step size. Step size is 0 0.1. Let's combine um, everything to one side, the x2 and the y2s. So I get 100 x2 and then there is minus 200 y2 on the right and plus 1 y2 on the left. If I combine them to the left, I get negative 201 y2. And what do I have left on the other side? Just the negative 2. Okay, so if I look at this here, it's now a system of linear equations that I now need to solve for x2 and y2, right? Um, now, fortunately, this is a system of linear equations because the ODEs themselves in the system of ODEs were linear, right? Um, if they were not, then we have a system of nonlinear equations that we need to solve. But we already touched upon how to do that um, using Newton's method as well, right? We can solve systems of nonlinear equations. But fortunately, here they are linear, so we can use our trusted Mike Gauss Jordan method to find the numerical solution to this. And if we do, we find the following numerical values for x and y just doing a single step. Okay, and we compare that to the analytically exact solution. Well, we'll see that, well, we're not exact, obviously, because we have a truncation error, but we're actually not too far off, bearing in mind that we just did a single step instead of 100 or 1,000. So we did a lot less work. We just did a single step. Yes, we had to solve a linear system with Gauss-Jordan, but that's really not a problem, right? I could have used Kramer's rule directly to write the solution. So we did a lot less work using this implicit method because we're not limited by a stability restriction on our step size. So that's why implicit methods are the preferred methods if we have stiff ODEs, so ODEs with vastly different timescales. Okay. Now, if the ODEs are nonlinear, I mentioned, then the resulting system will, of course, be nonlinear. But we can uh, solve these using the equations, the methods that we developed in module three for nonlinear systems of equations. So at the end, let's do one more challenge question. If we neglect stability, so we are assured that our step size would give us a stable method, so stability aside, which from the following methods will in general be the most accurate solving ordinary differential equations? 
Right. Which one out of this list here would you pick to solve your ODE if these are the only choices that you have? Would you pick A, an RK1 method, meaning explicit Euler? Would you pick B, an implicit Euler method? Option C, would you pick an RK2 method, for example, modified Euler? Or does it not really matter? All of these methods are the same. Please make your choice. So the answer is you would pick, stability aside, an RK2 method, a modified Euler method, because that method has the highest order from the listed methods. It's the only method that is actually second order accurate. So that would be your method of choice if stability and stiffness of the ODEs don't come into play. Thank you for watching.